Hey, I think he did the thing. Look, we're alive. Oh, we are. <laughs> And we matched it. I didn't even realize that till just now when I'm looking and I'm like, look at all the beautiful yellow everywhere in the it's room. It's a lot right of now. yellow. It's a lot of it's yellow. A lot of yellow. It's a sunshiny day here, guys. This hot and humid and semi miserable July day. It could be worse, but you know. It could it could be worse. It's only like a hundred degrees. Oh my that's God. it. That's 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 all we got. And been like choking humidity. So, you know, it's awesome. Everything is wonderful. Things are great because we are whip making today. Yep. Yeah. So Spencer is back. And if you guys have watched several months ago, he did a paracord whip for us. Um, but he has been braiding some rue hide whips here recently. And yep. he's like, Liz, I think I'm ready to yep. do a rue hide because this is different than doing. It's a lot different. A paracord whip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he's already got some stuff here, but he's going to show you guys how to cut the strips because they taper, right? Uh, they taper, and you got to get the right width to cover what you're braiding around. Yeah, so there's a lot of little technicalities into into some fantastic whip braid making mm -hmm. things. And he's going to tell us all about it because I got nothing, guys. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> that's, that's all I have for all my right. intro today. So, I already did some. I got a little core started. Okay. Or first belly, technically. Um, I remember bellies. You remember the belly. I do. I remember. Oh, yeah. that's really zoomed in. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are really. Yeah. We're, we're going to be able to see really this really, really right good here. right here. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, to make the handle, I have a, a quarter inch steel rod in this handle. This is going to be a bull whip. It's going to be a six foot bull whip. Okay. So, I got a quarter inch steel rod. I think it's nine inches long in the handle. So, what I did was I... Sand it down. You want to go to the top view? So, I sand it down, end of the rod, so it looks like that. It looks like a, a big little, snap setter. It does. <laughs> and then what I did is I got a piece of veg tan, about two inch veg tan, and wrapped it around, made it about foot and a half, two foot long, tied it on so it has a, a center core so you can start braiding around that whenever you do your first belly. Okay, so this one has this inside of it. Yep. This and is the inside. end of it is like looks like that. Yep. And then there's a piece of veg that comes yep. out. You can kind of see it right there. Okay. And then how far along here does it? Um, it goes to about, about right here. here. Let's untie this. Let's untie it. And did you glue it on? I just tied it on. You just tied, just tied it. Oh, into this little notch that into you created. Into the little notch. That's why there's a notch. Yep. So Brilliant. It goes okay. to about here. So you can see where the transition is. Is right here. Gotcha. It goes to about here. It's about, about a foot and a half or so. Okay. Right. And then for everybody wanting to know how to start this first one, if you go back and watch the paracord one, you can see us making this first belly because we did all of it. There was a lot of braiding happening yes. in that first one. So if you need kind of a refresher on starting, that will get you to that point. And that's how he mm -hmm. created his first belly. Yep. Yeah. And then um, unlike paracord, you have to measure your what you're braiding around and get the right width of strand that you need. So what I did is I got a pair of calipers I measured my rod, and I took that measurement, I times it by four and a half, and then I divided it by how many strands I was gonna use for that braid. This is a four strand, all the way down. It's just okay. four strands. So you multiplied by four and a half, and then you divided by four? But yeah. Okay. And that gives me the width of strand I needed to get a good coverage at a 45 degree angle plat. Ooh. So, yeah, and if you look, as I, as I go down, I know it's gonna get smaller, so I tapered down the strands. And we'll get to that whenever I start braiding. But if you look up here, they're a lot wider uh -huh. than down here. And yeah. you can really tell on this guy. This is one I did a while ago. See how wide the strands are up here? And then when you get down to the end, they're just little bitty bitty things. Those are about a millimeter wide. Whew. So, yeah. You can't do that with cowhide. It'll break way too easily. And we are using Rue, and he is not using pre-cut lace nope. like we sell. He has started with skins and yep. has cut his own, and he's going to show you guys how to do that. Yep. So I got a Rue hide here, or most of a Rue hide. <laughs> um, for, um, this is going to be very close on what I need for a six-foot whip. Um, it depends on how much scrap you have left mm. over. What's the longest whip do you think you could make using kangaroo? Um it depends on how many bellies you do, uh, but a five, six footer with about seven square feet should get you pretty close. Five to six foot whip? Well, five five to six foot with a six, seven foot square foot hide. 
Gotcha. Should get you pretty close. So we'll find out here. So that's what I found out. But, all right, so this hide's looking a little rough on how it's shaped. Y'all can see it has some tight bends. We don't want that. When we cut lace, and what we're going to be using to cut lace is an Australian strander, Aussie strander. We do sell these, so. It yeah. is a 011-308200 for the Australian strander. Yep. That, that guy. This, this little guy right this here. This little guy. Has a little ring. You have an adjustable edge guide here. So, yeah. They're pretty cool. It takes some getting used to to cut them. So, what I did is I found out I need five millimeter strands to cover this whenever, after we put our bolster on, which I will get to that, what a bolster is and all that. So I figured out I need five millimeter strands. This is sitting at about seven. So I'm cutting them a little wider than what I need. Um, so we don't want any of these harsh angles in there because it'll, it'll mark our, make our strips whenever we cut them wonky and not smooth and lay flat, as flat as you want them. So we'll come in here, all these sharp corners and we'll just smooth them out a little bit. Just a touch. So we don't have any really sharp corners. And the reason, one of the big reasons why I use an entire roux hide is because there's stretchy parts of a roux hide and not so stretchy parts. Sure. So the, your center bit of your hide is going to be your best bit. That's what you want your overlay to be made out of because it doesn't stretch as much. And your bellies don't matter as much, so that's why you take it out of the outside of the hide where the legs are. And the legs stretch certain directions. So like this is a leg here. So your neck would be here, one leg, the other leg, and your tail. So your legs will stretch in this direction, but they won't stretch as much with the leg. So huh. whenever you cut your lace, you want to get, especially when you get up, up to the overlay, you really want to be up in here. So you don't, it doesn't stretch. Sure. So. Mm, is that a little more? Don't cut your fingers. Yeah, yesterday was not a good day for fingers in the shop. Mm -hmm. We had we had two people that decided to put snaps through their fingers. Yep. With our snap machines. <laughs> yep. So that's, that was a good time. Fine. Spencer thankfully was not one of them. I was not. He, he has done it before though. I haven't. I haven't. Brandon has. Oh, Brandon put a snap. Snap. I'm surprised I haven't, <laughs> but I haven't. All right. So we're gonna take our strander. Set about seven millimeters. We want to finish at about five and a half. It doesn't have to be precise. This is a belly. So we're going to take This is it. not the final layer. Nope. The final layer is what you want perfect. So how we're going to do this, they're just going to start. Make sure you have a sharp blade. And just follow your edge guide all the way around. And just You're good. Kind of So hold your strand you're cutting, and just follow it around. And this takes some practice. I know some of like the professional whip makers and stuff, they just use a pair of scissors. I don't know how. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know. Um, opening and then also closing them. No, 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 they just slide them. Oh, just slide they just, them? Slide. They just slide them and get the right really way. sharp then. Probably, Probably but like Greg Carmack the trimming his binding. binding. They've probably done it once or twice. Oh, I would assume so. Experience is key. Okay, so this is interesting. So unlike cutting with like the black lace maker, oh, yeah. you're literally Sorry. just cutting around the edge of the hide. Yep. Yeah. Don't be mad. And this will, and I only cut enough lace for the belly I'm doing. Okay. So. Which is why you didn't want those sharp. I was kind of, I've never used an Australian strander before. Yeah. So we're literally. It looks like you can get more use out of a hide you can. than with the, the black yeah, one. Yeah, because you have to cut a circle exactly. with the black one. Yeah. Which is good because kangaroo is not cheap. Nope. So, and then the length of strands I have. Um, basically, what I did is I, I made a little graph here. I'll show y'all. And uh, 
I took my overall length that I needed uh, and times that by two and that gave me the length of one strand and then I added those two together so here I'll show you all my very sketchy poor design here so I need nine and a half feet and nine and a half feet to get to four feet so I'm going so the first belly I did is about two feet and then I'm going to go to four feet and then the ending overlay will be six feet so to get to four feet I roughly need about nine and a half feet of strand on either side uh, and that, that allows a little extra. I like extra. It's better to be too short, too long than too short because it's really hard to add. Mm -hmm. um, so I got those and I'm going to end in a four strand. So I need four of those. And then I took the shortest length I need, which will come down about, oh, what, a foot and a half down my belly I have, I think. I think that's what I figured out. And then I just split the difference. For my other strand so and then i added them up so i need an eight foot strand a 13 foot strand and, and two 19 foot strands and they gave me a total of 59 feet that i need for the second belly wow so it takes for a the lot second of, belly. for the second belly and how many overlays are we doing we're doing one overlay so after this will be the overlay Okay, so two bellies two bellies and then and your an overlay. overlay that's the typical amount of layers that you okay. find in a whip so three layers. Yeah, unless you're making a stock whip or something, most of the time they just have a belly and an overlay. And the core. And a core. And a core. The core is made a little different. So like this one has the core. Yeah. And then just the two, a yep. belly and an overlay. Yeah. Okay. That one has a keeper, and then the core is tapered in both directions. So it's a little different of a process. Hey, Michael. Welcome. So Spencer is just using his Aussie strander and just cutting, you said an eight or seven millimeter? Roughly, yeah. A roughly a seven millimeter wide strip of lace all the way around this rue hide. He trimmed it up, took off the super sharp edges. Not a lot, just a little bit. Just a little bit. And as I strand, if there's any sharp edges, I'll go back and round those out. For anybody that doesn't know, kangaroo is some of the tightest grained leather that you can buy. It makes, it has very little stretch to it. It's very strong. Mm -hmm. what, what, two or three times stronger than cow, something yeah. like that. I feel like it and horse are probably very, very similar leathers. It's just we have a weird aversion to using horse leather in this country because we're sentimental about our horses, just like we are about our dogs. So we don't tend to produce very much horse leather. Yeah. But you can't say I've ever used horse. So we used to use it all the time in the shop. You missed the you missed the era of making know, concealing and carry belts out of. Horse out of horse? Y'all made them out of horse? We lined them. So we used Herman Oak collar for the top, and then we lined them with horse butts. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. We used to have horse butts on pallets. We don't have that anymore, so please don't ask. <laughs> All of you out there. So we're... Are you going to measure it eventually? Yes. Okay. I'll measure it here in a second. We'll measure it here. Are you trying to get your entire length that you need? Yeah, the whole 19 feet. Okay. So that's two feet. I have a yard well, I'm just going to use the, the poundo. Oh. Six. It's like 15. Getting close. Getting close. What uh, what color hide are you using today? Uh, is, I the, believe, is this ochre? That's what I was going to say. This is our ochre glazed kangaroo. Mm -hmm.
Um, horse fronts are usually pretty thin, um, and they'd be really good for upholstery leathers. So depending on, I'm assuming what you've got, if you say that you've got horse front Angela's, Angela is, um, is a nice thin upholstery leather. And honestly, anything that you need good, like tensile strength for, you could use it. Um, if you were making like cushions or whatever, just because it is a really dense, tight grain. So you have a lot of strength, even when it's really thin. Um, so if you had any projects that you needed, that you were afraid that like a cow leather might stretch it out, then you could use your horse. But honestly, it's just upholstery leather. So you could use it any way that you wanted along those lines. A little more just to be safe. Cut it off there. All right. <laughs> So, this started out about six feet, and it's about, what, three and a half feet now? So, that tells you how much you use. Quite a bit. All right, so we've got right. 19 we plus got, feet. Yep, 19 plus a little, roughly. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, I caught it. I <laughs> caught catch. it. I caught it. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna condition this now. I just got some yes, black, black rock. rock. Yeah, I just, you know, anything that'll make it softer, um, more pliable, slide better, can you saddle soap. Um, For those of you out there that are the Denny tried and true fans and you always have a tin of saddle soap, just it'll, it'll work. It'll loop it work. up with some saddle soap, yep. So I'm gonna take some. Although I will say Black Rock is probably one of the coolest product names I've ever heard. It is, it is very cool. <laughs> So. Do you want, I have some canvas. No, I'm just no? going to rub it on. Okay. I'm not buffing it or anything. Okay. Yep. This is just so it slides easier whenever we stretch it. Gotcha. Because. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here. Thanks for rubbing your leather on camera. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I tried, please. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like snot. Oh, does it now? Yeah, your little can there. It does look yeah. like... <laughs> does it feel like snot? Congealed glue. Not really. What does it feel like? Black rock? Yeah, it's like an oily, waxy paste. <laughs> yep. This is a lot... Um, the, the black rock is... It seems like it's a lot softer than your saddle soap. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, as long as you can get it on your fingers, mm -hmm. it should be fine. M more viscous? Yeah. Then saddle soap is a little bit. But, it's, well, it's a. Uh, it's more of a solid. Yeah. It's like shoe polish. Yep. Peter Main cut lace. I have not seen Peter Main coming. Michael, I did see your email. I apologize. It's been a bit of a busy week since we came back. Um, one day behind. I've been filling orders. Like for twenty four hours. So, I did read it, and I will email you back soon. All right. So. All right, now we got to stretch it because you don't want it stretching before you size it because then you'll get inconsistent size and you'll get gaps and stuff. So I just got a little a little hook. You can put a hook in the wall or something and that'll work just as well. This is just one of our wall hooks. Right it's just here. one of the wall hooks. <laughs> so as long as it's strong enough to hold. I feel like maybe I should have swept before this. I didn't realize we were going to be throwing conditioned leather on the floor. All right, it'll be fine. <laughs> it'll come off. So It's going to have Luna hair all over it. Probably, but you know. I'm gonna wrap it around twice and then I'm just gonna grab it and pull. Interesting. And and what is this for? We're it's, stretching it. So, yeah. I oh, mean, get, get the whatever stretches in kangaroo out. Yeah. Whatever, whatever can stretch needs to be stretched because, like, right here, it stretched quite a bit. So. Oh, nice. Thanks. <laughs> it's a good angle, Tony. Killing it today. <laughs> I can already see Luna hair in there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> nice pull, Spencer. Thank you. This is about like 19 foot with a pull. Got long arms. Oh yeah, a lot of Luna hair. <laughs> wow. I'm just gonna keep. It smells good. I mean, it does have a smell to it. I think it smells good. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it smells better than other things that it could smell like. That's true. Right. 
Not sure what that is, but... Okay. It smells that bad to you? No. Okay. It just smelled like conditioner, really. But if I can't be dramatic, then oh, I'm okay. not living. Yeah, all that Luna hair there. <laughs> oh, I got a knot. Don't want that. Rut row. Rut row. Spencer's good for two things. Whip making and bowling. Mm -hmm. And bowl. Yes, I can bowl. <laughs> for those of you that didn't know, he's pretty stellar bowler yep. over here. He holds it a little bit like a baby, and then he just sends it down and takes all the pins out. It was, it was impressive. He didn't beat my team, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but who made it onto the bowling team? Spencer. Good <laughs> yeah. I didn't need to do any contributing, but... All right. So it's stretched. Okay. How much? How much pressure were you were you putting on that as you were pulling it? Like quite a um, bit. As much as I do whenever I braid, because I don't want to pull any. I don't want to not pull as hard as whenever I braid, because if it breaks, I want it to break here, not sure. when I'm braiding. Gotcha. Because that would suck. Oh no, I don't. So, um, I was probably given quite a bit of force. <laughs> You know, I wasn't like pulling with all my might, but a decent, a decent, a pull. decent pull. Yeah. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Yeah. It's, it's pretty strong stuff. All right. So I got a bell knife, not a bell knife, a pulse guy for setup over here. Uh, it's not necessary that you do this, but I always like to do it. There is inconsistencies in the thickness of this, uh, because you stretch it and the stretchier parts will get thinner and mm -hmm. the thicker parts won't. So I always like to go through and even it out. Just makes for a nicer overall finished product. This seems like it's going to be a little tedious. Um, no? It, I mean, I don't know. It's not too tedious. Too often bad. So, you just got to make sure you got your coal skyver set up to the right thickness. Hi, Abigail. Say hi. Okay. We're just looking at you. Just say hi. Okay, but now we're going to look at him skyving. Right. so bad. Hold up. Well, Abigail's in house today, guys. Everybody say hi. We can all be excited that she's physically with us. Hello. Now, if we could just get her mentally with us. <laughs> <laughs> that is so rude. I'm rude? 100% here all the time. All right. Except for when she's driving. When I'm, not. <laughs> so. I'm thinking about you. Always. All, all I'm right. doing. Trust me, I know. It's holding it and pulling Trust it. Me. <laughs> so you're holding it against the roller. I am, because you don't want it to pop up. <laughs> and as you can see, it's not taking off a lot. Are you not just going to do this once? Yep. Or are you going to... Just once. Just once, okay. Mainly up around the neck is the thickest part. Like right here is pretty thick spots. So we're gonna take just like on a cow. Yep. Plus we're taking off a little Luna hair too. Yeah, that's true. Well, now that we conditioned all the Luna hair into it, we okay. can take it all back it off. Adds the to the conditioning. You know? I always tell everybody if they buy a knife sheath for me, it's gonna have some dog hair in the stitching. I can't avoid it, no matter how much I vacuum. <laughs> So, it's taking off a decent amount right there. Yeah, and then we hit another flat spot. So. so you're not necessarily worried about it being exactly the same thickness throughout. You just want to get off those extra heavy yeah. sections. Yeah. Okay. And stretching it also helps it in this process because if you don't, where where whenever we went around the corners of the hide, it's gonna it's. It's gonna sit at an angle, so if you pull it straight without getting it moist and stretching it, it's going to kink up and cut your lace in half. That's no good. Nope. You don't want to do that. Oh, we got another spot. Is there a skiving tool that will do the thickness and the angle edge at the same time? Um, there is. Yep, yeah, but it's kind of expensive. Uh, I don't know what it's called. There's actually a tool that does all of it. It bevels it, it does the sizing, and the 
Skyrim. Is it a very specific lace machine? Uh, it's something you stick in a vice, or it clamps to the table. Huh, okay. And it's just a mach- it's basically a machine dowel with slots in it that you can stick your blades in. And it also helps to have it very sharp. Yep, all all tools should just be really all, sharp. All tools should be very sharp. Ooh, that sure is taking off a lot. Yep. Oh, this makes me nervous for you. Why is that? Is just in case I cut it in half? Yeah. <laughs> I have done that before. But that's why you're pulling it down. Yeah. Down yeah. and then even with the blade. Yeah. So he's on the back side. He's got it pulled over the roller so that it's not going to pop up onto the blade that's on top. Yeah, Angela, I'd do that too. I'll, I'll burn the dog hairs out. Sometimes you can get most of them. Sometimes I just leave one for fun. You know what? That's the whole... <laughs> Has a little pizzazz to it. Exactly. Andy right. said it's called a lace master. A lace master? Like our Andy? Yeah. Lace master. Is it Weaver's tool? I don't know. I think when they make their tool, they call it the master, the master lines or whatever. When they master said, tool. But, but who's splitting hairs? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. What are we doing now? Uh, we got to size it now. So, I made this little jig up yesterday. <laughs> Because Another Spencer I original. For, I forgot my extra sketchy one, so I had to make a semi sketchy one. We got so, this. So this is just like the the cutting board from yep. our clicker beds. It's what this material yes, is. Yes, yes. There's some back in the back of my. Hey Jim, can I use this? So, sure. <laughs> so uh, I got a couple pins in there just to hold this piece. This piece clamps a blade in between the two, and this is an edge guide that I can. Loosen and slide in that slot to get different widths. That's so ghetto. Spencer. In there, it's a little crooked. My edge guide is, but you know, it'll be <laughs> fine. Hopefully, none of y'all are OCD. But <laughs> it is better than this thing. I, yeah. I like that one better though. I, I don't know. They're probably about the same. This one just, but it just has this blade coming out the edge there. Everybody see that? That beautiful mm -hmm. blade just hanging out. <laughs> We also, we went over this one quite a bit in the paracord uh, video. No, 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 in the paracord video? Uh, I think I brought it. Or was it the... Um, the Turk's Head. The Turk's Head or the Hat Band or the Landry One thing. of those braiding videos. Just those. watch all the Spencer videos and we'll talk about that one somewhere. All right. So I'm not going to size this directly to... <laughs> Andrew wants to know how much you would charge for prepping roulette. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know. <laughs> He'll think about it. I'll think about it. We'll email you. you. <laughs> I don't know. That would be kind of hard because it's very particular on what you're doing. Like, I don't have a pattern for any of my Rue Whips. They just, they happen as they happen. He does that every time. It yes. is what it is. It like is what it is. All right. So, I'm cutting it a little wider than five and a half millimeters because we're going to go down each side of this lace. And do this. So it's a little over five and a half. Spencer will charge you $60 an hour and however long it takes to finish the lease. Yeah. <laughs> Plus the cost of lease. Plus cost of lease. <laughs> There's no service charge, so I'm put SLC yet for kangaroo lace prepping. <laughs> yeah. Just throw it all on the floor. I know. There's exactly. a giant wad of dust right there. Hey, Randy. All right. You need a wet jet back there. I sure do. Mm -hmm. All right. This it's going to be hard to see what I'm doing. But. Especially when I'm loading and kicking the camera. All right. So I just sat it in there, and I'm just going to run it through. You can see it's already taken off a little bit. Especially when you put your head away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You can see it's taken off quite a fair amount. So you started at seven and you're 
or your final width needed to be five. Yeah, but you see, I started at seven, but it's not taken off. Two millimeters taken off like at a half a mil. Yeah. So that's what the stretching does. Even roof stretches. And I'm not going to worry about beveling this layer because it's just a belly. Most of the time I would use this instead where it has the angle. So it gives it a bevel. Makes it the lace lay flatter. And you can do that with any braiding. Like double loop or Mexican round braid or anything. It'll make it lay flatter. stupid weeds that have the really cute flowers in the spring have started to bolt mm -hmm. and the really cute flowers turn into tiny little prickly things that get stuck in my dog's hair. Uh -oh. And then she doesn't like it when I pick them out. <laughs> so let me be sticky. Yeah. They're all down the alley here. So every morning when we walk down the alley, she has to weave in and out of the weeds, of course. Of course. And then they just get all up in here. <laughs> Who 19, 19 feet is a lot of feet. It is a lot of feet. <laughs> the longest singular strand I've done, like one side is like 23. So both sides was like 40 something feet. Woo. But that wasn't real. That was paracord. Gotcha. It was Andrew's whip. Uh, yes. Yep. G. Feller Case Makers for Lace Master Equipment. Mm. Mm -hmm. You should write that down. Should I? Or you could just continue to make your... I'll just make my sketch. <laughs> All right. Spencer just makes whatever he needs. Yep. That's why I started making whips. Because I wanted one. And I didn't want to buy it. So I made it. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to go to five and a half. So that was like six and a half. Oh. Are you going to flip it over and do the other side now? Yes, we'll run it down the other side. Ooh, too much. What's wrong there, Lynn? Angie. Jeez. Right. Luna jingles. <laughs> Her collar don't oh. fold. All right. <laughs> 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 Luna, don't jiggle, jiggle. Throw it back on the she floor. She falls. <laughs> <laughs> we see her wiggle, wiggle. Oh, oh, my oh boy. Uh, All right. So now I set it to the finishing width, and we're gonna run it through on the other side. On the other side, because that other side was a little bit wonky too. Uh huh. Got your whole fat arm in the way. Thank you. It's huge. I, wor I work hard. You know. <laughs> I work out! <laughs> <laughs> I think he just chases chickens around. I don't have chickens. I have quail. You have a quail? I have a singular quail. It's like a pet? No, it's it's a it's an egg laying quail. Oh. The rest of them died. Aww. So. Is it alive or is it stuffed? It's it's alive. It lays I mean, he eggs. has a stuffed one in. Oh, if any, do you still have that? Is I that still, still for the, sale? Yes, I still have the pheasant. If anybody's interested in a stuffed pheasant that Spencer did, yes, it's we very can send nice. you pictures. Yes, it's lovely. It's up on a pedestal mount, sitting on a deer antler. Yeah, around corn cobs. It's it's a lot of fun. Spencer's dad is a taxidermist. Yep. So, 
from a young age, he's been dealing with animal hides. Yep. <laughs> a wee lad. Just a wee lad. <laughs> hey, Hicks. Raiding in with 17 people. Woo! Liz, tell them Whoa. Yeah. What's up, guys? Welcome. We are currently watching Spencer trim his 19 feet of rue lace. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to be making a bull whip. A bull whip. A kangaroo hide bull whip. Six foot rue hide bull whip. Six foot rue hide bull whip. So we are prepping our lace right now. Welcome to the show. Let me go. Let me go get something. I got. I guess we got something of Hicks. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're, well, we're, hang on, we're, we bought it. we're done with this, so I don't know what we're doing next. What are you doing next, Spencer? Uh, bolster. What's that mean? Are we do <laughs> exactly. It here? Yes, we'll do it here. Okay. okay. We'll do it here. <laughs> All right. So, uh, a bolster is basically some veg tan that you wrap around each belly before you put the next layer on to lock in all the conditioner. Uh, There's the so much every... dog here. <laughs> all right, so it's it's a layer of veg tan you put over your core or bellies to lock in the conditioner and the oils and stuff, so you don't have a creaky squeaky whip. Nobody wants a creaky squeaky whip. Nope. You don't want any noise until that crack at the end, right? Nope. No noise. No noise. Silent whips. Silent but deadly. Until the end, and it's loud. <laughs> Until the end. All right, and we'll wrap this up so it doesn't get everywhere. And then he has this thing polished to like a mirror finish. Yeah. Oh, yuck. Who is this from again? Uh, Hicks Tech. Hicks. Uh, he just. He just he just came on in. Yeah. So this is one of the knives that he makes. If anybody wants to check it out, we got this one for Denny. Ironically, it's my color, but you know, that's cool. What's up, Wiggles? We'll set this over here with our other one. And we'll get to this. And get rid of all the straps. Ah, this is sketchy. It's not that bad. I cut myself like looking at knives, so. <laughs> well, I cut myself yeah, using I knives. <laughs> <laughs> and pretty much anything else, you know. Alright, so. This is about an ounce and a half, two ounces veg. It doesn't matter what type of veg, as long as it's veg. Actually, you could just you could use rue hide too. It if matter. you wanted to. If you wanted to get yeah, uh, uh, just a rue hide, just for bolsters, because you couldn't <laughs> cut your lace and do your bolsters out of a rue hide. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by lining up the handle down here. Are you completely covering this? Yes. Like it's going to go well, away? It'll go to probably down in here somewhere. Okay. And then it will taper it off so it actually doesn't wrap all the way around. You never want an abrupt stop. That makes for non... It, it doesn't, doesn't flow. Add, it doesn't flow. you got to let it flow. That's the whole thing about whips is they, they have to flow yep. all the way to the end. So I'm just going to roll it around and mark it where it meets up. <laughs> All yes, Andrea. the way down. Andrea said that you're the guy that one might want with them in an apocalypse situation. No, I agree I've, with that. I've, I've been told that so many times. <laughs> He's yes. very handy. How much do, how much do you charge for whip? Uh, depending on the length and what it's made out of. So if you were going to sell this six foot rue hide whip. Um, it'd probably be about 500. 500 bucks. 500 bucks. That actually sounds like a pretty good deal. It, it is. Like for a handcrafted, fully like done up, lead. yeah. Send your orders in now. Mm -hmm. We'll post his email address. His email. Do you, you have, have one use, of those? I do have email. <laughs> you know Look at use that. email? I do. Oh. You know, I, I do. I'm a little techie, just a little Spencer bit. Spencer is the youngest grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> I've been. I've heard that many times. Also. <laughs> do you use a flip phone? I don't know. I, I actually have a real smartphone. What? A genuine smartphone. <laughs> Poor Spencer. I did I didn't get a phone until I was sixteen. Hey, me too. I, like I had to buy my own. I did like too. 
slyly under the radar because my parents were like, nah, you don't need one of those. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't get one until I started driving. So. But you are significantly younger than me. So. Well, just a little bit, you know. Just a wee bit. 21? No, I'm 20. 20. I'm 20. He's just 20, guys. Yeah. So like you are. Edge? I would love a straight edge. 12. We got a straight edge. Behind you. 12 years younger than me. Yep. That's a whole person going to school. Yeah, that's like a whole school cycle. <laughs> that's a whole school cycle. Right. MacGyver. Yeah, that's what we're going to call you. A MacGyver. Mick, Mick Spencer. Yeah! Mick Spencer. Mick Spencer. Right. Sounds like... I have watched all of it. Have you watched MacGyver? Mm -hmm. Oh, you would love it. He makes stuff out of gum. Out of gum. I mean, it's... You probably watched them on reruns. Like, I watched them when they aired. Yeah. <laughs> we did. 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 We Saturday Night Live. Or <gasps> William said when I was 16, phones were bolted to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and they just had like a 20 foot long cord that you yep. can drag into every room. We've watched those movies, William. We're familiar with your predicament. Mm -hmm. <laughs> predicament. You, know, you, you like, used to talk on the phone and you'd walk and you'd like spin all the way up in it until you got back to the phone and then you'd have to unspin again. <laughs> and then your mom would get on the other line and you'd go, Mom, get off the phone. I'm talking to my girlfriend. <laughs> Okay, All so right. you just I got a tiny little a slip. tiny little strip that fits around. So what does this do? What uh, are we doing? It it keeps the moisture in there, makes it not creaky, and it helps your strands to lay flatter on your next layer. Okay. So and it also adds rigidity to the whip. We are gonna wrap it with string string. Especially around the transition. That's your weakest point, as you can see. Not the best spot in the world. That's, that's where it's going to bend and more than likely break if you don't reinforce it correctly. So, and we don't want that to happen. So, what we are going to do is... Mm, more conditioner. More conditioner. You can never have too much conditioner. We're going to rub the core down, or the belly, with plenty of conditioner. I think people might want to buy whips from you. How much would you charge for a paracord whip? Um, a paracord whip, uh, what I have those at? Uh, doo -doo. I believe it was 200 for a four footer, and then every foot is another 50. Okay, so 200 for four base, and then $50 up. Unless you want like a 12 foot whip like Andrew had. Like a crazy one, then you're probably yeah. like six, 700 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his had three bellies and an overlay, Woo. and the overlay had 20 strands in it, so. That's a lot. It, it took a while, to say the least. <laughs> it cracks very well, though. Are you proud of it? I am. Like, you could barely move it, and it just <laughs> It was amazing. It's very loud, too. I don't think he really got it to cracking loud, but. Yeah, whenever I cracked it, it cracked very Whenever loud. we finish this, we should go to the back alley and uh, record you taking a wet plate. I think we, didn't we do that a while we ago? We did it a while ago. I don't think y'all did anything with it. But. We didn't do anything with it because it was less than average. <laughs> oh, okay. It didn't appear. Not your, just the videoing experience. Yeah, it, uh, yeah. we were going to do a park or something, weren't we? We talked about we it. We talked about it. We'll do that one of these days. We'll have Andrew bring his whip back in. Yeah. I think he mainly takes pictures of it. But Probably. It's a good prop. Does what? Takes pictures with it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, to look cool. Yeah. That's I'm the just, main, main reason why I wanted it. For one of his many um, Renaissance Fair outfits. Yeah. That boy and his wife have the most Renaissance outfits I have ever seen. Who? Andrew and his wife. They probably have more Renaissance than regular clothes. Oh, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm just okay, wrapping. so you're just wrapping. I'm just wrapping it. Did you okay. tie it in a knot or just wrap it around? I just wrapped it around. Yeah. You just want to make sure those pieces butt up together? Yeah. Not yeah. overlapping? Um, It's okay if they overlap a little bit. Yeah. So...
I'm not pulling super tight here. Just enough. At least all these people are talking about like what the phone was when they were young. Like what are they? This Michael said when Kevin was sixteen, the telephone was a chain of signal fires on top of mountain fringes. <laughs> wow. Lord of the Rings style. Yep. <laughs> mm, that head again. Is there it in there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry. You guys get to see all the lovely Johnny Bravo hair that yep. springs her. This Let's there even know what party lines are. Yeah. What's a party line? Where you have you have multiple phones. You have multiple. You have like a like a multiple way call. No, they used to have it where you and your neighbor would share the same phone line out. So sometimes you'd pick it up and your neighbor'd be on the phone. And you'd have to wait for them to be off. Of oh no, I didn't know about that. That was way before me. We had a like we had a wall phone when I was younger. We yeah. also had like dial up internet. I mean, that was the dial up internet. Yeah, and there was. We had those printers with like, that was like, meh, meh, and it had like the thingies on the side that you had to tear off. What was that noise? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we had those when I first started working here. We had those printers, all the office girls, and it was like the three pages. So you had the white, the pink, and the yellow oh, copy. Uh -huh. And then you have to like tear it off, and like you kept one of them, and then you sent the other one to gathering. Wow. That was probably right before I started, wasn't it? No, it was it was significantly before he started. Kevin would probably be still using it if he could. I bet he would be, yeah. Mm -hmm. Slowly but surely. You're getting there. We're getting there. And we got to go back up, too. So you go all the way up and then back down. And then back down, and then we'll go over the transition a Just couple extra times. Extra reinforcing. Extra reinforcement. We want nice and springy. <laughs> Yep. Andy said, dot matrix printer. Yeah, those ones. Yeah. <laughs> yep. This is thrilling. I know, right? <laughs> was when I would put on a movie and listen to it. <laughs> Didn't I say, I was going to bring you some movies. I don't remember which one. Yes. Oh, I know, I know the two that I recommend to everyone should watch. That They're one of the, I mean, I don't own that many movies. I don't have like a box somewhere, but. I don't have a DVD player though. That was the problem. That was the problem. That was the, I was going to have to bring player. you my DVD player too. Yeah. I had to I had to get a new DVD player here recently because I redid like my little entertainment area and my old one was too big for the spot. So I had to buy a smaller one, even though my old one was perfectly fine. And honestly, I've probably used my new one like three times in two years since I bought it. Yeah. But I have it just in case I need to watch Hackers and or The Fifth Element I think for the hundredth time either. The yeah. Fifth Element, I believe, is the one you yeah. told me I need to watch. You do need to watch it. Everybody should watch that movie. All right, on our way back up. Ooh, it's nap time. <laughs> <laughs> These are really labor intensive. You should charge more. Yep. Yeah. I mean, they're labor intensive. They just take a while. That's labor. It is. I mean, when I think of labor intensive, I think of hard work. Like laying concrete? Yes. Like <laughs> laying concrete. Bricks. Or bricks. Or <laughs> sweating outside. Or having to unload a whole pallet of Herman Oak. Yes. Something like that. Yes. Yeah. I remember last yes. year in the heat, I built a pallet. I came in soaked in sweat. <laughs> All right, we're getting back up to the transition. This just looks like some fishnets that you would see on a Saturday night downtown. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I'm afraid it doesn't even have to be Saturday night. It's beginning night. All right. Uh, so we're going to get this nice and tight. And I'm just 
going to go over the transition. Oh, okay. Yeah, we made it back to the yep. where your metal rod ended, yep. and you tied on that piece of leather. Yep. So I'm going to go to the transition, down to the thong. The thong of the whip is the bendy part of the whip. And then I'm going to go a few inches past where I stopped last time I went down, go back up, and then up and down and up and down. And that evens out the tension so you don't have a break in the flow. Okay. Supports the transition between the metal rod and that piece of edge. Yep. And there's a lot of innards to a whip. Yep. And I know I discovered this on the paracord one, but I'm rediscovering it because that was several months ago. Yep. And if you ever like buy a cheap whip off of Amazon, even one that looks good, you open it up, it's probably going to be plastic bags. Oh, what? really? Plastic bags. So that's what they're doing with my recycled plastic bags. Just filling, yep. filling whips. Interesting. Some, some more expensive wallets you can open it up and find Tyvek mm -hmm. in the pockets. In purses, I know that some purses had some uh, like cardboard type of material in it. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, we sell the bag stiffener, but a lot of times it's just pleather on top of cardboard. Squirrel Girl is, is that middle one? What? That's YouTube, right? The middle one? Yes. Okay. So Squirrel Girl on YouTube, is that from the White Stripe song? I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care about your question. We just want to. No, she did. She just also said that she loves the fifth element. And so I'm wondering, I, or like you, I don't know. Oh, I guess you said girl. So I'm assuming that it's or, a girl. <laughs> You didn't quite spell girl, but I think that I figured that out. She didn't ask, is this nylon thread? Uh, yes, oh, it's okay. nylon thread. I, I see that at the bottom. Oh, I'm okay. still stuck <laughs> up at the top. I don't get too many people that still remember the fifth element. All right. It's an obscure one. And I just tied okay. that down. You know, wrapped around. Wrapped it, through, wrapped it through itself a couple times. All right. Loosen that. Maybe turn it. Maybe. This vice decides to turn. I think that's all it's wanting to turn. So we'll leave it there. It's going to be slightly at a It's going to be, yeah, hopefully none of y'all have OCD again. Because <laughs> that's how it's going to be. I mean, I can turn it, but then the camera, then the table would not be in the I mean, the table, the table isn't is straight fine. either. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's it's all going to be fine. Brandy, the thread is waxed hand sewing thread, yes. Yep. I think that's just the nylon thread that we sell, isn't it? Andy gave it to me. Oh, Andy gave it to him. Yeah. He's like, here you go. You could use this. I'm it's like, just okay. a wax thread. Yeah. So. Oh, this might even be our, uh, it looks like rhino thread. So this is just our might be. waxed hand sewing rhino thread. <clears throat> Spencer did pre-prep many cords before. Like he had all of these prepped. Yes. This is the one that he just finished that he no, actually. This one is. Oh, this one is the one he made here, but he made all three of these yesterday. Yep. So I'm going to find the center point of all of them and tie it in and all. Okay. So we have a center point. You're going to do that with all of them? All of them. Okay. I can help with that. You can. I, I can find the center. Yep. I'm capable. <laughs> a lot of us are off center just a bit too. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now, are all of these different lengths? Um, are they all the same? So, there's there should be two 19 footers, and then what did what I say? A 13 foot, and then an 8 foot. And this okay. one's the 8 foot. It's actually four, two 4 foot, a little longer than 4 foot strands. They're probably about 5 foot gotcha. strands tied together because a strand broke. It so happens. It happens. While you were stretching it? While I was stretching. Which is when you want it to happen. Yep. And you don't, you want to cut the full length of lace before you cut them into your separate parts. So if it does break, you can measure out and work out what strands you can get out of what pieces of lace. Gotcha. That makes sense. Yep. So have you done, ever done any fancy plaiting? I have. It hasn't been too fancy. I've done like uh, Egyptian eye stuff. 
I mean, it's hard to explain. I've done some weird ring-looking things. You did when we did the paracord one. You had the two colors that you yeah did a diamond braid. Yep, a double double diamond. I believe is what I did. So all right, so I'm just gonna clamp that in there. Start on the back. You're going to layer strands over. Albert, if you are currently watching right now on Facebook, we are doing this live right now. So you can watch the full thing when we're done. Yep, it'll replay on YouTube and also Facebook. Yeah, so we'll probably be at this for, I don't know, I'm assuming another half hour or so. And then the whole video will be Ooh, complete. Sorry. Thanks, Vince! <laughs> and then we'll do, we'll continue on. Yep, and then we'll continue on Friday because this will not be the end. All right. So. I wrapped it around the back, two of half my strands. I'm starting it just how I did the paracord one. Okay. Exact same way. The exact same way. Can we talk about how you were starting this? Did we? No. No? All right, so basically what I did is I took two strands and I wrapped them around the back side, which are these two right here. Your two 19-footers? It doesn't matter which ones. Okay, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, these two right here. And then I took this and made a little loop, like so. And then I stuck the other two strands in. And then I tightened it up. So now when I, I'm going to pull on these. And then... And they hit that knot, it's like that, I know I'm in the center. like that. It looks like a mess because it is, but it'll be fine. All right. Okay, so maybe just one more time go through what you did to start. All right. So I took two of my four strands. Um, I wrapped them. The cent I put, tucked the centers behind the back. And I brought one side over and then the other side over. So I made a little cross right here. And then I pushed this up. So I made a little loop right here. And then I stuck the other two strands in there, closed the loop, and then pulled, and then pulled the these till they met the center knot. Okay. And that's how you start. And then we'll just lay this out as neat as possible. Are you going to leave those knots in there? I will leave the knots in there till I start. Okay. So you just pull that all the way back to the end of where your rod is? Yeah. And then we'll plat a little bit, and then we'll push it over out over the end. So we're just going to start. Uh, I don't. The paracord one, it might be laid out a little nicer than this, but how we're going to do this is we're going to take the top strand that these strands, since they're over the finished strand that they're pointing to, the top one on that side, we're going to take that. We're going to go around the back. And since we're doing a eight plat, it'll be under two, over two. So I'm going under two strands, over two strands. Oh. I just punched the camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Hold on, we have technical difficulties. No. You can keep Bounce spinning. upside down. <laughs> All right, hang on a second. Hold on, move over. So you almost it. knocked it all the way out. Oh, will you go hit one on my desk so people have to... Oh, man. All right, hold on. i got to get this back in here. That was fun, guys. Oh, man. Okay, Spencer, don't punch the camera. I uh, try not to. Okay. I mean, it's pretty high up above this table. You he's said I have high. long he's arms. He's tall and he's got, like, arms that are long. He's got arms. All right. Like, now let's try to go back to four so I can re readjust this. <laughs> That's funny. 
You huh. was the first for everything. Yep. I don't oh, know. I'm Has sure Denny ever punched the camera? No, no probably we've not. Hit it but with he's done before. We've hit it with leather. Go <laughs> plenty of times. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we're back. We're back. <laughs> All right. Sheesh. So, since we went over that side, we're going to take this one now. We'll run back. <laughs> Specs all calm, you know. Over two, under two. Over two, under two, over two. Under two, over two. Yep. Under two, over two. So just like that. And a little conditioner. <laughs> Always. <laughs> that just makes everything lay nicer. Yep. Makes the strands slide easier. William says, isn't live TV fun? <laughs> sure is. Okay, I'm going to stand a little bit over here. <laughs> Not so, so, you, so you don't get slapped with the string. I already have a massive a bruise on my leg. I don't need one around my eye. Yeah. Although, I feel like I would be able to remember what happened, though. Half the time I get a bruise and I'm like, I don't even know. Yeah. Where did this come Yeah, from? like, well, I don't know what happened. <laughs> but, you know, if you punch me in the face, that would be a good story. Mm -hmm. That would be, be a good time. <laughs> like a bull on a china. <laughs> <laughs> We're just over two, under two, over two. Under two, over two. Under two, over two. And that's just a simple eight strand plait. So when you're just pulling your top, your top one is on your right side. Yep, so whichever, because you guys can see that this, right, this one right here, this one. Is your top one? This one. At this point? Yep. yep. This is pointing at this one's pointing up towards this one. I want to take this one because it'll lay over at that angle. Right. Whenever I do it. Under two, over two. <laughs> you missed it, Chad. Must have punched the camera. I did. <laughs> I punched the camera above me. All the way around. <laughs> 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 wow. Oh, he, he dang near knocked it out of the, yeah, out of the, out of the, out of the socket, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. All right. Tripod head, but it's not on a tripod. Oh, nope. Is All right, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to slide this up now. Get those knots up above that steel rod. Is that way you can cut it off later? Or? That's why we can cut it off. Oh, okay, nice. All oh, right. I forget you do weird things like cut your braid. I do. Freaks me out. <laughs> Work all this time to put it all together, and we just start chopping it just off. Just chop it off. Yeah. But he lashes it together real good first with some thread. Yep. Holds it in place. Each layer. Live is better. Than live. <laughs> Randy said, live is better. You can ask questions. That's right. Yeah. And either we ignore them or answer them. <laughs> Apparently, I scared the squirrel girl off. <laughs> yeah, she didn't say nothing else. She's like, Peace. "Baby, are you looking up the White Stripes song?" And she's just listening to it now. I need, yeah, I need to know if you already knew about that song, and it was just a coincidence that that's your name. It's probably, I don't know why it's one of my favorite White Stripes songs, but it's just silly and cute, and I like it. Everybody, everybody should look up the Squirrel Girl. I didn't know there was one. I do now. And then are you gonna do this all the whole way? The whole way. The whole way. This is all we're doing. Well, we will get to tapering, maybe. Right. We'll see. We'll see. If I get that. Do you far. taper this layer? I do. Just like you tapered the first one? Yep. Yeah. Taper the strands. So basically whenever I get to a point where I feel the strands are getting a little crowded and I don't drop a strand, I will cut about a millimeter off of half the strands. And so do you do that with your little tool? I do that with, the, yeah, that one. With the handheld sketchy tool? Yeah. This thing? Yeah. Because it's easier to adjust. You just like... Sure. And it adjusts. I wonder if this truck driver knew this, that you can drive all the way down this alley. You don't have to back up the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that's what you guys were giggling with. The whole room is just giggling. Which I can't hear it over the I truck. I think it's our back. water truck. 
It's probably a water truck. We were over there like, we were doing the motions. <laughs> You do. A lot of slinging room. I feel like I'd just be at home with like my cat trying to like <laughs> trying to eat trying yeah. to catch the strands. So I don't let my cats in my room whenever I do this. Okay, so William stuff. said the pattern looks awesome on the front, but what does it look like on the back? <laughs> the same. Just as cool. Yep. Just the same. As long as you have your strands right with and all that, it should be even. So even on the sides, it's the exact same. All the way around. All right, at this point, weaving. I would move down here, but camera, you know. You oh, we can, well, we can, we can get you up with something else. Yeah. Yeah. Tony can do camera magic. What am I doing? I'm moving down here. He's moving, moving, down. moving on down. I'm moving on down. He needs to, we need to be shooting this way. Everybody likes that song, Thomas. Literally, it's in like almost every other movie that comes out because it's amazing. They're all like, we need some Seven Nation Army up right here. Or, or we're just going to move the table. I can't move the camera. It's connected to the ceiling. Oh, I thought you would get it from the side. Oh, no, the overhead seems to be. I bad. just raised a couple right. squirrels years back. That's a little too far now. That's Maybe. perfect. What are you talking about? I don't know. You're in there. You're good. That's good. Yeah. All right. That'll be fine. It's great. It'll be fine. Here. Okay. I okay. got you're good. All right, all right. Yes. Yeah. Woo! Careful. Try. Or squirrel, squirrel girl, you should look it up. What are you doing with your head? It's a fun one. <laughs> Getting in the way? Yeah. <laughs> you know, just, just a little hair. Nailing that part of it. Thank you. I, I try my best, you know. Success. Hmm. I should have switched cameras before I started moving this one. Hey Liz, do you know that they have a Squirrel Girl comic? No. Well, they do. Interesting. A girl from Stranger Things, Shannon Purser, the one who gets, well, anyway, you know. She's going to probably be playing it soon. What? Like the main character from Stranger Things? No. Like the girl who, like. The redhead? Yeah. Okay. Did she die? No. Abigail? She hasn't watched it yet. We're not allowed to talk about Stranger Things. <laughs> She's re-watching. She hasn't seen the end. Sorry, guys. No Stranger Things talk here. We're not allowed. <laughs> We're not allowed. Her colleagues are close. <laughs> what? People call me the squirrel girl. <laughs> For other reasons. <laughs> I know we have to like talk in code right now, Abigail. <laughs> it's been it's been complicated all week. <laughs> but I just found out some news. I'm hoping that it's not true. Oh, because you haven't watched it either. Oh. Oh. All right. No, then never mind. <laughs> Any anything new happening, Spencer? Nope. Same old, same old. Any other fun whip facts that you would like to regale us with as you braid? Um, there's a lot of stuff. You're sticking on the string. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if y'all know the physics. <gasps> Please enlighten us I don't, I don't us know on if y'all want me to go into the physics. <laughs> into the physics of whip? Of, of we would whips. love it. I don't know. Like the profile of the whip Please is tell very us. important. Okay. So, I don't know. Have you ever seen like uh, the MythBusters guy? I forgot his name. Yeah, uh, yeah. He did Jamie? a. Or the other one. Uh, I don't know. It's one of the two. So he did a thing where he set three tracks up with marbles. He had a straight line, and a slightly swooped line, and then one that kind of dropped off and went straight. And you would think the fastest way is the straight line, but it's not. It's a swooped one. So it's the same thing on a whip. You don't, most people think you want a straight taper all the way down. You don't want that. You want it to fall off kind of sudden at the transition and then just 
slowly taper out. It makes for the fastest, smoothest action of the whip. Interesting. Uh, so, and the angle of your braid matters too. So most most whips are at a 45. Uh, some people request request 30 or 35 degrees. That makes for a tighter action. So the loop, when you're cracking it, will be tighter. And some people like that. I mean, I don't really feel a difference that much. So you've you've done both. I've done both. Yeah, there's slightly different math in strand width whenever you do a 30 or 35 degree. But interesting. Yeah. Now you're standing on your strands. No, I'm standing on my strands. Yeah. Oh, I hit that camera too. <laughs> you shouldn't have put that there. <laughs> Just don't punch it. <laughs> I, I'm not promising nothing. Does Spencer collect any whips? Uh, I have a lot. I don't. I would like to start collecting like famous whip makers, like. Uh, can't think of any of the top He's ones. only 20 guys. Yeah. So he started making whips because he couldn't afford the fancy ones and he wanted to make a cool one. Yep. So I made one. So one of these days when he makes money. I make money? What are you talking about? <laughs> Ouch. We pay him. I mean, like, Denny makes $4 an hour, so he probably makes like three fifty. dollars Yeah. You know? like so <laughs> they don't tell me. <laughs> they just, you know, give me a check. Like, here you go. It doesn't even say how much I made on it. <laughs> How much I made. It's a mystery check. Yep. Okay, so, so let's. That's what you get. The piece of paper. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> you don't collect those? So, <laughs> we've got um, someone, and I apologize, I cannot pronounce your name. Maybe Peter, but pronounce it differently because you're fancy. So, um, they would like to know at what phase of the. M- at what phase of the moving every strand do you tighten? Flat. Uh, right here. So I went around the back. I pull it tight. You can see it's this strand right here. I pulled and it moved. And then I lay it over and hold it down with my thumb. So I'll take it around like this, pull it, then lay it over and hold it down with my thumb. We'll move this up here. Did we get to all these questions that are on here? Um, most of them. Yeah, I, I, I have. Let's see here. You got about the, the phase of moving every strand? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Thomas said that he learned from an Eskimo, and they the, the person that taught him used uh, tapered strings and a 45-degree angle. Yeah. I mean, I taper as I go. I don't cut tapered strands. <laughs> I mean, if you wanted to make an English eye whip, then you would have to pre-taper them, but I don't feel like doing that. <laughs> An English eye is where you start from your the tip of the whip, your fall, and work up on your overlay instead of from the handle down. So you have to reverse taper your strands wider. That sounds difficult. And a lot of math. So why would someone want an English eye? Like, what's the advantages to braiding that way? Um, it's, a, it's a smoother transition because basically you just have a little bitty loop where you tie your fall hitch on, or your fall. You don't have a hitch. And I don't necessarily know why people do it because a fall hitch is just as effective. And if it breaks, you can just move it up a little bit and retie it on. Uh, so that's why I've never made one, hmm. and I don't want to mess with all the math of reverse tapering my strands. I feel like someday you're going to have to do that, though, just to do it, just to say that you've done it. Maybe. <laughs> that sounds like a fun challenge. Peter, where are you from? He said that's what... Yeah. That would be Peter in English. <laughs> Yeah. Spencer, what do you do on a daily basis here at SLC now? Because it's different from the last time you were on a video. No. Mm-hmm. Last time I was on the video was like two weeks ago. Three weeks ago. <laughs> was I here? I don't know. 
I think you were. I did the Mexican round braid. That, that wasn't like two <laughs> weeks ago. Bro. That was like, that was like <laughs> three months ago. That was not three months ago. I, I think yeah. it was. No. <laughs> no. We can check. Let's yes. see. Yeah. <laughs> I said three weeks ago. But it definitely okay, wasn't three I weeks can, ago. I've got YouTube pulled up. I'll check. Yes, please. <laughs> Abigail's. Abigail's coming on I, the time I, machine. You can't just casually throw out, I learned from an Eskimo and not go into you more cannot. detail. Not Let's Thomas, we need to know about, about your Eskimo. Eskimo. Who was the Eskimo? Your Eskimo braided. Where was the Eskimo? <laughs> she has so many questions for you right now. Her eyes got so big. Give the details. <laughs> Give the details. Do you know who David Morgan is? Yes. Okay. So okay. Chevy guy, a.k.a. Nick, uh -huh, uh, says that he has a David Morgan whip, but it's not an OG one. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's one of his newer ones. Or his... A humble brag, Chevy. Uh, yeah, his. I mean, his grandson makes him now. I don't think David Morgan Ooh. makes him anymore. Frodo says that he's got a whip handle method that he would love to show you after the show on the Twitch. Yeah. Yeah. Peter's from Poland. Peter's from Poland. He's got three. He's got yeah, so you apparently you'll have to stay for a minute. Peter's okay. That's and wondering. Frodo will show you. Frodo. <laughs> Frodo, Lord of the Rings. What was Frodo's last name? Bag Baggins, yeah. yeah. Good job. <laughs> he was really unsure about that for Yeah, second. I was thinking, uh, you know. Underhill? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But I know, at first I was like, <laughs> do I they thought have it was last a, names? I thought it was a trick question. <laughs> Does SLC keep Spencer in a glass cage when he's not doing uh, live by the way, it was No. It was May the fourth. May the fourth. May May the fourth. So it was it was two, two months, months. Two months ago. Yeah. It wasn't three months though. But, but it definitely wasn't was two to three weeks. weeks. Okay. Well, we're both wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still doing the same thing then. Michael Spencer cut strips for his main living. <laughs> yes, I cut strips. And make belts. And make belts and purse straps and some guitar straps and conceal and carry belts. Yep. Spencer is one of our magnificent team of strippers. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas has answered Abigail. Okay, so we've got my sister lived in somewhere, but the Skimos were Eskimos. in. Eskimos. Yeah. Eskimos. 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 Well, it says the Skimos. I, I am just assuming that it was a spell, uh, uh, autocorrect. Skimos is fun. <laughs> we're in Go Saskatchewan on. in 1973 for the Winter Games. They were from the Eastern Arctic. Saskatoon. Saskatoon. I think, I feel like I'm going to, that's one of the towns that I stop in on our cruise. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan? Maybe not. But I, I doubt that you stopped in Saskatoon on a boat. He's Mr. Geography, so he knows it all. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> she has a horse. Sure is fun to say. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> Sitka. <laughs> yes, I would, I would. Did you find out where Saskatoon is? No, I was just looking back to what it was. It would be Sitka. really hard to get there by okay. a cruise ship. Well, you know. Because if you take Canada and split it about in half, it's about in the middle. Okay. <laughs> you guys ever watched the movie Brother Bear? <laughs> yes. That's what that makes me think of. What movie? Brother Bear. One of the characters in it just sits Oh, on Brother Bear? Yeah. Wait, have you seen it? <laughs> Let's see her. I took classes with Liz. You took classes with me? Have you taught classes? I taught some like metalworking classes on retail. Let's see here. Uh, Chantal would like you to kind of go over some specifics about like the leather and what you're doing. So, like, like, just. I mean, like if you, yeah, like if you had to tell somebody. What kind of leather are you using, Spencer? I'm using Ruhide. You're using kangaroo? I am. What color is it? Uh, ochre. Ochre? Do we um, sell that here? We, we do. do. We do? Do we, we do. have a number for it? Mm -hmm. yep. It's yeah. in Hello. 
It's in the catalog. Look yeah. it up. Yourself. We have <laughs> it's in the jeans. Yeah. <laughs> Quite a few colors. It is. Uh, so how how wide are your strands? Um, about five millimeters. About five, five millimeters. Half. Five and a half, something like that. And if we look back earlier in the video on the recorded video after it replays, we'll be able to see that. Yes. Huh. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know if you got that. Are you using the glazed kangaroo skins? Yes. You can use glazed or unglazed. 189-707. 189-707 for this specific color of the kangaroo skin. Mm -hmm. The glaze comes in three yeah. different colors. That's how you spell yeah. that. And we can special order any of the colors that we sell in our kangaroo lace. Like We don't stock the skins in all the colors that we sell of the lace. But if you are interested in getting different colors of the kangaroo skin, you do have to buy at least one full skin, obviously. So it'll be like seven to nine square feet, I believe, somewhere in there. Um, and then it'll take probably a couple weeks up to maybe a month and a half for us to get it in-house from Australia. But you can special order any of the colors of the kangaroo lace that we sell in a full skin if you wanted to do that. Yeah. And then Jessica wants to know if you work for tips when you're doing your normal job, or do they pay you a normal hourly rate? I mean, they don't tip me, but I wish they would. <laughs> Sometimes, if you do a favor for somebody on retail, they might tip you. I actually, I, yes, I've had yeah, that happen. Exactly, I have had that yeah. happen. I got several tips while I was working on retail. Hmm. Except for, I wasn't working on retail. Oh well, you were. You helped them. I helped them. Yeah. And then they tipped me. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> Thanks. We do accept tips, so you know if you come in and you Did get you a real, you get that? a. <laughs> what? Special. Did you shake an extra for that? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. All right, guys. Kevin watches these. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody gave me a two dollar bill for a tip once. Mm -hmm. A two dollar bill? Yeah. I had the same thing. I still have it. It's up on a clipboard at home. I was like, okay. <laughs> it's kind of fun. <laughs> Don't eat yellow snow. Um. <laughs> Is that a tip from an Eskimo? <laughs> <laughs> so how far do you want to go today, Spencer? Uh, it don't matter. What time is it? It's 12.30. It's 12.30? It don't matter. Okay. So Whenever basically... We, cut it. we haven't lost any plot, uh, any it, strands, have we? Nope, we mm -hmm. have not. So basically what I'm going to do is I'll go a little bit further. <laughs> And then... Luna. Luna, Luna, we're talking. Rose must be outside the door. Must be. All right. Okay, so what are we going to do? So I'll go a little further, and then whenever I start seeing the angle of my plat change or my strand start to scrunch up, I'll take my beautiful sizing jig, mm -hmm. and I'll size the strands down from the bottom okay. side up. So this is at an angle. It doesn't have to be at an angle for this, but I'll size them down like this and I'll pull through and I'll narrow them down just a little bit. So to they keep don't, your 45, to keep my 45. And then when I get down to probably in this region, I'll drop a strand cause I'll drop a strand right in there. And then I'll drop one probably at the end of my last belly somewhere in here. And then I'll continue out to my forefoot. And then as I'm doing that, I'll continue to taper down my strands. Okay. So, and then how many strands will you, finish with? I'll finish with four strands. That's so you're going to go from eight to four. Yep. That's okay. the minimum you need is four. Right. So, yeah. Okay. And that's then on, so you'll do that. And then on Friday we will start again and you'll do your last one or this no. is it. No, oh, this is... we'll do the overlay next. We'll do the overlay. We got one more layer. Okay. So, yeah. Cool. Well guys, we will see you back on Friday. Um, if you guys have any questions, write them down so that we can address them on Friday. Um, as we go and uh, we'll try to cover whatever he did kind of off screen once yep. we get back. Is that so. how you secure your strands to take them and travel? Yeah, I just tie them in a knot. So, Whoop. tie them in a knot. Look at that. Beautiful. Spencer's a, a boy scout. He knows all the knots. I know a lot of knots. <laughs> all righty. Let's hear anything else. I'm kind of looking uh, Peter asked, for longer whips, would you cut tapered strands or just drop? Oh, I think we... That was kind of what we just talked yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. so that's what we just talked about, and we'll talk about it again when we come back. Yep. Um, Tangled Up Leather is offering their brain 
to us today. So that's yeah, super she, awesome. She was the one asking if Spitzer worked for tips. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll take it, Jessica. We could always use a little extra brains. That'd be cool. Alrighty. Awesome. Well, thanks, everybody. Thomas, thanks for your awesome story. That's really cool. Um, with your Eskimo braid learning. That's pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think he won up to you a little bit. I think so. <laughs> I think so. So, alrighty, guys. Well, we'll see you on Friday or tomorrow for live shopping at 2 p.m. Central Time on Facebook for those of you that join us there. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you soon. See ya. Bye. See ya.